Good morning all. Uh, this vocoder project is a lot of work and I have to admit that my enthusiasm for it does ebb a little bit every now and again. Um, but I'm not a quitter, so I won't give up. I may sometimes slow down to a crawl, which I suppose is tantamount to uh, quitting, but no, I won't actually stop working on any of my projects. So anyway, this um, pair of um, LED bar graphs has sort of gone a bit horrible. They don't quite match the beautiful precision with it with which I've done all the others. Oh, you haven't seen those, have you? Let's have a quick look. Uh, this is going to have to kind of pass through conveyor belt style because it's a bit uh, big. Piece of wood which I got from B&Q for four pounds. No, home base, I think. Um, but you can see all my filters made on these um, proto boards and all of the uh, LED bar graphs sort of sitting on top of these wires. There's a gap in there, well, for the one that I'm working on. Power supply is mounted there. Another three boards there with another five of these little LED bar graphs. Yes, this is the uh, sort of first phase of my decking timber vocoder build. It's the spectrum analyzer. So yeah, this vocoder build, and there could be several, um, is going to be on decking timber. It's going to be a sort of open plan vocoder build. Um, and as well as being able to see all the components, filters and VCAs and all the sort of nice stuff, I'm planning to completely festoon this thing with LED bar graphs. So it's not just a sound spectacular, it's also a lighting spectacular. Why won't that come out? Probably because I've heated up the wrong part of the track there it comes and this one needs to come out and there it is so i need to put new pieces of wire on those to get them to the correct height and solder them back into this board i mean that's what spectrum analyzers are really isn't it it's just an excuse for a light show lots of leds um at well typically on a spectrum analyzer one octave spacings and lots of bouncy LEDs bouncing up and down to the music. They're not very scientific. Um, now that one octave spacing is typical for spectrum analyzers, but this vocoder, of course, is designed for analyzing speech. So it's a much narrower range of frequencies. Um, so these filters are at third octave spacings. So you hold the piece of wire between your middle and ring finger the solder goes between uh, thumb and index finger, and then you can work those independently. Uh, so now I want to tin this piece of tinned copper wire. The blob goes on and I let go before the heat rushes to the end that I'm holding. Let's just do that again. So a nice blob of solder on there so that I can and then let go before the heat gets to your fingers. Uh, so those now can be soldered onto there. So now there's no need for um, to hold the solder. I'm just holding the piece of wire and I'm just going to solder it onto there. There's a blob on the wire and there's a blob on the board, so I don't need to add solder. There's also a little bit of solder on the iron tip. In fact, I might have to add some more solder to that. Oops, that's a bit messy because otherwise I just won't get any heat transfer. So let's do that. And once again, I'm holding the wire. Oh, that didn't attach very well. Oh, it's not bad. And I let go when the heat gets to the other end, of course. Now let's pre-shape these two wires. I want it quite an angle on there. And then the input one uh, has to go up somewhat to go to the output pin of the op amp. And the other one is ground. Let's just do the other one, bend them down. The input one sets off in a slightly different direction. Yeah, that should be okay. Now, the thing about spacing these filters at a third of an octave is that when I whistle into my microphone, um, and I can probably cover about an octave range, let's try it. Yeah, that's an octave. Um, I should be able, by whistling up an octave, to go through three of these filters, go through the resonant frequency of three of these things. So whistling should enable me to uh, trigger 
these different bar graphs at the different frequencies. Oh, that was all a bit obvious, wasn't it? Uh, now I've got a problem. The holes, pin 7 there and ground, pin 1 there and ground, of course, they're all full of solder from where I pulled them through. Now, of course, I could suck or wick solder off the back here, but then that's going to suck it off components as well. Uh, I think it's probably easier just to poke a bit of wire in there, heat it up from the bottom and just dab the wire in and out to work a new hole through there. I'll use that technique, I think. Will it work? I've put a little handle on my piece of wire made out of blue tack. Heat that up and... Oh, wag, I wanted to waggle it in and out. Uh, it doesn't really work, does it? Okay, solder sucker it is. Solder sucker on single-sided boards. Eh, it's always dodgy, isn't it? Because you can remove the copper. Um, yeah, I'm always a bit nervous of doing this because the traces, the tracks are only glued onto this um, SRBP board. They come away really alarmingly easily. Right, let's tack one of these wires on with it lying on its side. You probably can't see this because the lighting's not very good. Now I can kind of pick it up because it's kind of stuck in there. And I can solder the other wire. Where is she? She's there. In you go. Okay, so now I've got my VU meter dangling on the end of two wires. Now that's uh, the input signal and ground. I am going to have to provide 5 volts separately to this VCC pin, but let's just angle that down, move it approximately where I think it wants to go. Okay, let's do the other one. Let's crop these wires and I think we're good to go. That's all my 12 PPMs. Now I'm just a little bit concerned uh, because these are in bar mode and you can't put these in dot mode. There isn't a dot mode facility on the single inline chip. This is the K KA2284, I think it is. So it's bar mode. So when they all light up, all 12 of them, with all, all LEDs hit the top, that's going to put quite a strain on the 5 volt power supply. Right, now the tricky bit of putting these two standoffs back on my board. Uh, mounting this back on there oh 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 and i'm trying to get these screws in without everything moving around to put this board back on my piece of decking timber that one seems to have gone in okay that one i think is in place let's get it in before it goes out of position uh yeah so that's it that's all 12 uh, bar graphs and all 12 there are 14 filters actually but I haven't fitted number 14 because it's a high pass it's different to the band pass and I haven't fitted number one because it's a low pass which is also different to a band pass so uh, yeah let's just tighten these down this one has some components left over from when I built the filters at the other end of the board and then had to take them all back off again oh dear but um their positions might actually be correct for the the next components that go on here and those are of the rectifier and smoother more about that another time but yeah i think that's ready to start wiring up now the wiring up procedure is putting the 1202 whoops um, power supplies on which are these three wires this um, little distributing connector i made up here sends five volts to each and every one of the bar graphs and then i have to put some daisy chain sort of hopping loop wiring onto all these boards to distribute the 12012 the uh, input signal yeah ground i've included that yeah all that kind of stuff now if you're thinking julian those bar graphs look very temporary um yes they are temporary they're not going to be there forever uh, they're going to be there until i add on the rectifier and smoothing op amps which will then be able to drive an lm3915 10 led bar graph which can be put into dot mode and i think i'm going to have to put it into dot mode otherwise the five volt draw will be enormous 
Um, and of course, the LM3915 is the um, bar graph chip I want to use. But what's nice about these ones is that they have rectifying and smoothing circuits in the chip so that I've been able to sort of build this prelim version of my spectrum analyzer. Right, I've got lots of these bits of wire with the um, sort of stripped back ends. They're solid core, they're quite thin, but they just fit perfectly in the turned pin sockets. 10 centimeter lengths seem to be about right for doing the daisy chaining of each of these boards. I'm just distributing the 12012 power supply and the input signals and ground and all that. Um, but there's a lot of daisy chaining to do, so let's get uh, sticking some of these in. Mm, this is quite fiddly because it's all quite difficult to get to now. So that one daisy hops across there. I'm glad I did these as triples because this middle one, well, I did think about this, of course. Um, I need to hop one way, hop the other way, but also take in the supply which are these ones i hope they're long enough hmm the wire for the negative supply wasn't long enough so i've had to replace that so that goes in there i'll probably just wire up the center three boards initially uh just in case i've got something badly wrong here right this one's ground will that fit i've had to put the fan on again it's so warm and yet outside it's much much cooler today the house acts like a storage heater all the warmth stays in the bricks. Right, so that's ground. Ah, ground. I didn't do a triple, I only did a double. So how am I going to distribute that? I might have to put two wires in there. So yeah, this is a pretty neat power supply from a single supply in. And I use 13 and a half volts, my solar supply. Oh, 13.2. Um, it can generate a positive and a negative. These are the adjusters for those. I think they're set to 12 volts. So I've got sort of adjustable plus, ground, adjustable minus. 5 volts there has that big thick wire going to that <laughs> distribution point. So I can power up all the LEDs. So it provides 5 volts as well. It also does 3.3, this thing. There's a little 3.3 regulator there. It's got a USB output. It's a really neat power supply, but I can't find it now. Um, I bought it a while back and um, I can't see any sellers who are selling it, but I love it. Right, I think all my positive and negative 12 volts, my grounds, my input signals are all wired up. Got a little plug-in jack there that I can put my audio signal in on. I just need some DuPonts now to um, link 5 volts to these six bar graphs because I'm only going to power these three boards up initially in case I've made a mistake. And uh, having lifted the camera up a bit, how about some gratuitous shots from one end? Because, well, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Look at all those capacitors and integrated circuits, op amps, and uh, resistors and pots and things to twiddle. Yes, it's a thing of beauty, isn't it? Right, I've checked all the plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts, they all look correct. I'm going to do an initial power up. All that will do is put 5 volts on uh, these VU meters. I've also got it going to the outer ones, but they don't have ground yet, so they won't light up. So let's just try plugging that in. And yeah, those light up and pulse fully up to the top. So that kind of looks encouraging. Um, I should, should also have 12.012 on my analog boards now. Now I need to feed it with some sort of uh, audio signal. 